what priorities do you expect the new government will want to consider from the perspective of pharmacy? Mm -hmm. I think they're going to want to look at how do they work with, uh, with pharmacy to deliver on their policy objectives around better care, high accessibility of that care in the community, particularly around the ability of pharmacy and pharmacists to deliver high quality, cost effective care. And that's really the, the premise uh, of our cohesive platform that we launched uh, in partnership with uh, the Ontario Pharmacists Association, looking at the areas that we can have patient-focused services that drive better value in the healthcare system. So we had a four-point uh, strategy starting with uh, how do we better leverage uh, minor ailments, common ailments in the community to drive better utilization of resources. And it's really about enhancing interprofessional collaboration. It's not about an us or them mentality. It's really about getting uh, the right person in front of the physician, the right person at the hospital, and those, uh, those patients that can be served in the community can access through uh, you know, a highly uh, accessible healthcare provider. One of the things that we know in recent polls is that pharmacists still rank amongst the most trusted healthcare professions, uh, more than any other healthcare provider, at 94%, and that was a nationwide poll. So the question we have is how do we better uh, leverage that trust and the relationship to better help people manage their conditions in the community and keep them out of emergency rooms and for minor ailments out of, uh, out of physician uh, appointments. We still have certainly an issue with respect to people having access to physicians. So having the highly trained and skilled pharmacists accessible to communities is really going to be an important part in driving efficiencies in the, the healthcare system. And if you look at the other parts of our, our system, I think it's well aligned with the data that shows the savings and the benefit to patients when you uh, expand on the success of the flu uh, vaccination that's been in pharmacies for several years in Ontario. We certainly would like to see that expanded to all publicly funded and available vaccinations, building on that success and harnessing the, uh, certainly the skill set of the, of the pharmacists. And the other two parts of our platform that I think we're certainly going to be advancing will be enabling point of care testing for things like strep, uh, uh, among other uh, conditions. Uh, we'll be able to get timely uh, access to results, which will re certainly have better health outcomes and faster treatment, uh, treatment plans. And then lastly, certainly uh, germane to a lot of our joint uh, advocacy efforts throughout uh, Ontario and Canada is on the medicinal cannabis file. We think that it's important to continue to advocate for the role of pharmacy in the dispensing and distribution of medicinal cannabis. Again, looking at it from a patient perspective, how do we ensure that patients are part of that circle of care, whereas today they fall outside of that circle through the current uh, LP uh, mail order ACMPR system federally. Uh, and we think we have a government that will certainly want to work with, uh, with the private sector and with the associations to drive towards uh, better health care for Ontarians. And I think it's reasonable to expect with the legalization of marijuana and cannabis that there will be patients who are experiencing it for the first time. So as a non-pharmacist, it makes a lot of sense to me that the patient should have the benefit of speaking to a healthcare provider. Certainly, I, don't, I won't be speaking to my mailman when he brings the cannabis in the mail. So that just, uh, there's an elegant logic to what you're talking about, and I think it makes a lot of sense, and I trust that the new government will, will agree and, and see the logic in that. Okay, so again, our number is one 584 6420 When you dial that number, you will be speaking to an operator. It won't be one of us, so don't be discouraged if we're still talking as you're still dialing. I'm going to switch over to uh, Alan now. Alan, are there concerns that you have of the government as it relates to health care? I think, Joe, with any government, you, you wonder what their strategies are going to be, and, and I think we're in that stage right now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very early on. Um, and it still remains uncertain as to what the formal positions are going to be uh, and how, probably more importantly, how our profession is going to be impacted. But government has been very clear um, in terms of its mandate that it's going to be looking for efficiencies without trying to compromise uh, service or jobs. And so from that alone, we're still very helpful, uh, uh, we want to be helpful. We, we believe and we're aligned with that mandate. Um, We've been concerned for many years that, um, in, just working with the, with the past government, that policies uh, have often been implemented, uh, conceived, drafted, uh, that impact the profession, but that don't actually involve us in, uh, in, their, in their construction, in their implementation. 
And one of the things that we're looking for is an opportunity to be at the table. Uh, for policies, programs, initiatives, even uh, regulations and legislation, if it's going to be impacting the profession or if it's going to be impacting patients where we are going to have uh, a role, we want to be at the table. We want to, be, uh, we want to help. We want to collaborate. Uh, we, want to be, um, uh, we want to be there uh, to help with the construction so that, and again, in line with that quadruple aim, we want to improve the patient experience, but we also want to make sure that it doesn't compromise the provider experience. Uh, so these are, these are part, of, uh, part of the concerns that mm -hmm. we have. Uh, we believe that uh, this government is going to be open to that, uh, that type of dialogue, uh, but time will tell, and, and uh, non nonetheless, we are hopeful. Again, I, I, I reiterate, we are at the front line. Uh, we are helping patients manage their health care every day, and we know the intricacies of the, of the challenges they face each and every day, and we hear the questions. Uh, our members will, uh, can, can attest to, to the, the sheer volume of questions that they get. Things like, how do I manage multiple medications, whether it's for my heart or for, uh, for my cholesterol? How do I, um, you know, what vaccines am I going to need if I'm going to be traveling? Uh, what over-the-counter products can I take uh, if I'm using medicinal cannabis to use, uh, to use that topic? And, and also, how do I, more, more importantly with the opioid crisis, how do I avoid getting addicted to my pain medications? These are questions that pharmacists deal with on a daily basis, and that's just skimming the surface. So, so we, because we're providing these answers uh, to these to patients every single day, we believe we have a message that we can bring to government, and and that our, our messages and our perspectives have value. Uh, and we believe that this will help with construction of policy and uh, help strengthen our health system. Well, certainly, I would say that both organizations have done really well with the previous government of establishing the fact that you're not only advocacy organizations but also repositories of considerable knowledge, health policy expertise, and I think a, an early challenge will be to ensure that the new government, the people in the Ford government, come to recognize quickly that you advocate but you also know a lot about health care and pharmacy and the provision of community-based care.